I think that when Dion came, because he was coaching his sons ever since they were little, but when he decided he was going to try to, you know, pursue it on a higher level, um, a lot of the critique was he didn't have any experience. Mm -hmm. right? He didn't have any experience. You know, how is he going to get a coaching job? He doesn't have any experience. I assumed that the majority of that critique was coming from uh, white people and white institutions, mm -hmm. right? because that makes sense, right? You, you, you're supposed to think that the black man is intellectually or dispositionally incapable. You're supposed right. to think that despite his qualifications or his achievements, you're supposed to think niggas ain't shit. I get that. But when black folks started regurgitating some of that rhetoric as well. What is it about Dion besides him being a great player that makes you doubt that he can- Arrogance. Arrogance. Okay. Arrogance. Little male jealousy right there. No, 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 no. And I think a lot of times incredibly gifted people have flaws that their gifts make up for but they think their flaws are part of their strength. And Dion was not the greatest corner to ever play the game, in my opinion. That's fine. Because of his arrogance. And specifically, black folks at a Jackson State, mm -hmm. that's what started pissing me off. Because it was framed as Jackson State gave Dion Sanders an opportunity, as opposed to Dion Sanders put Jackson State on the map. Okay. Right. And and the, re the 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 problem that I had with that is as black men, a lot of our the chip that we have on our shoulder is that niggas ain't shit. Cause it runs deeper than just like women saying niggas ain't shit. It's the world doesn't think niggas are shit. We, they think we are intellectually inferior. Uh, we're not even able to uh, protect our women. We're not able to actualize any of our visions or whatever the case may be. Damn it, this is the fourth week in a row you cancel on me. The yard looks like a jungle. Well, Tim Tim, you three vine swingers should feel right at home. I'll be there when the white man don't need me no more. And let this be yet another reminder that no matter how much money you got, you still just a nigga. So if anybody should believe in us, it should be us. Yes. Okay. Especially if we are in some way, shape, or form overqualified. Deion Sanders is a pro bowler. Deion Sanders is an all-star baseball. Nick could have coached baseball if he wanted to. Okay. Right? He he he's he's a legend at, at Florida State. He's a legend in the NFL. He's got his a gold jacket, the whole nine. But for whatever reason, he's still unqualified. Because that's our default with black men. Mm -hmm. So for me, when it got to the point where he had done all that he was doing for the uh, for for Jackson State that he's now doing for Colorado, um, but despite that, his son's cars were still getting broken into. Jackson, come on, man! Somebody done broke in my truck. How they gonna break in my truck right outside the football facility, bro? Come on, Jackson! They just done cut my window out like some bread. I don't even know how you do that. Right outside the football facility where. Coach Prime, can you tell the city of Jackson, <laughs> whoever broke in my truck, get my stuff back. <laughs> so we'll find out who broke in the truck. And a matter of fact. Despite the fact that he brought three of his children to a, to a, uh, um, when it comes to facilities, yeah. a subpar school just because he was overly invested in its success but to still be upset with the brother i'm like man what does a black man have to do right it, it's kind of okay. like when when uh people were burning lebron james jersey when he left cleveland mm -hmm. and i'm thinking like yo without lebron y'all wouldn't be shit. like thank you lebron yeah. that that should be the energy and I know, especially black men who found some success in their life, they have felt that sense of never being good enough. Never being good enough for a thank you. It's always, what have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. And for us to project that same energy to um, our greats, our legends, people that if they died tomorrow would rock the foundation of the world, I think is just, it's in poor taste. So it wasn't just you, but generally the conversation I was seeing around Dion, like this nigga sell out, this is, I'm like, you ungrateful bastards. Because if it wasn't for him, 
if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't even know this school exists. And I understand, you know, being an HBCU alumni, it's hard to hear because it's like, you know, swag, this isn't, but let's be honest, let's be real. Because that same energy, he's bringing that energy to Colorado now and it's being reciprocated, right? So we can continue, for example, to talk about okay. how men get some money or they become successful and they get a and white woman. Right. 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 Or get a white woman. Or we can we can actually talk about the fact that when that man gets successful, he's a target in the hood. When that man gets successful, instead of young dog. <laughs> You know, we're, we're one of the only communities that, oh, you think you look good, is supposed to be a compliment. Mm -hmm. Who do you think you are? It's supposed to mean that you are somebody, like we don't even know how to see ourselves as great. We don't know how to celebrate the greatness in ourselves, let alone the people who've like statistically and objectively checked off the boxes. And unfortunately, it's not until these men go, even like we're talking about the passport bros, it's not until they take their talents to South Beach or Thailand or whatever the case may be that they actually get their flowers. And we can either keep shaming them or we can talk about it and make sure that the next NFL athlete, the next NFL great who looks at Morehouse or who looks at Tennessee State and says, you know what, I want to bring my resources, my know-how and this, this and that. He's not put off by the way that people are crucifying a man who did more than he was called to do in a way that was more beneficial to the institution than it was to him. He didn't make no money off of that. Hey, if you've made it all the way to the end, please click that like and subscribe button. Also share this with somebody that you think would gain value from it. Also shout out to our Patreon executive producers and VIP members. Make sure you head over to Patreon and check out some exclusive content. A lot more happens on Patreon that can happen on YouTube. So please uh, consider becoming a member there. Click the thumbnail at the top if you want the full video. Click the thumbnail at the bottom if you want a video that's closely related to this. Again, like, share, subscribe. Appreciate you guys for watching. Check out some more of our content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.